Hey guys, welcome to this video on the React Learning Path in 2020. Now, I know we are already halfway through this year, but this video was a byproduct of me trying to list down topics on React that I wanted to create courses on. So I thought better late than never. And I'm also pretty sure that there are a lot of us who are just getting started with React or you've gone through React and you're unsure on what to pick up next. I've created this video to serve as a guideline for anyone who is on a React learning path. I have to tell this right away though, that this path is my personal opinion and is by no means an exhaustive list of what you should be learning in React. However, having worked with React for a few years and creating content for this channel has given me a pretty good idea to suggest a learning path for you to follow. Let's get started. I've broken down the path into three sections. Let's begin with the first section, which is the fundamentals of React. Now this section is for you if you are a complete beginner to React. You need to start with the Create React app. It is an officially supported way to create single page React applications with no configuration. What that means is that you can create a React application and mess around the code by executing a few lines in a matter of minutes. Once you have a Create React app, you then get started with some technical concepts in React. A React application is made up of reusable bits of code called components. And in React, you can create a function component or a class component. When you create components, you'll soon get confused by the idea of writing HTML-like code inside JavaScript. This is what is termed as JSX and is a syntax extension to JavaScript. With JSX, you pretty much describe what the UI should look like. Then you're going to come across the concept of props. Props, which stands for properties, are just arbitrary inputs for a component, which play a major part in making the component reusable. However, props are read only. A component can never modify its own props. This is the point in time where you start learning about state. State allows React components to change their output over time, which in turn re-renders the UI. Once you have a good grasp on props and state, you need to understand how to modify state. Along with that, it is also important to understand what causes a component to re-render and how to hook into those methods. So you will learn about two basic hooks, namely useState and useEffect for a function component. And you will learn about setState and the component lifecycle methods for a class component. Now that we are able to use state to change values within the component, we want to leverage that value and conditionally render the UI. So your next step is to understand the different ways to conditionally render elements in the JSX. After that, you will learn how to render a list of items and the key prop which is required for lists. Finally, you will understand how to build simple forms like login and registration by understanding the concept of controlled components in React. By progressing through the topics in this order, you will have a really good understanding of the fundamentals of React. The second section in this learning path focuses on the advanced topics in React. You will start by learning about React context, which solves the problem of prop drilling. You will then come across higher order components and the render props pattern, which are patterns to share logic across components. You will then learn about refs, which let you access the DOM and also error boundaries, which let you catch errors and have a graceful UI fallback if there are any exceptions. Then you will learn about React portals, which let you render UI outside the root element of your React application. Once you've understood these topics, you should focus on making HTTP requests 
from your React application. You can either use fetch or a package like Axios to understand how to make get and post requests at the minimum. Finally, you can concentrate on some of the other hooks like use context, use thread user, use ref, use memo, use callback, and even implement custom hooks that will share logic across function components. Now there are certain topics that are specific to class components and some that are specific to function components. However, my advice for you would be to learn both of them. If you were to appear for an interview, there is a high possibility that they have a few applications where they still use class components and would expect you to have a knowledge about class components and not just function components. If you've gone through this list of topics, you're in a great position. Now I can happily say that the list of topics mentioned under fundamentals and advanced topics can be found right here in this channel and I will leave a link to that. It is a playlist containing 70 plus videos with in-depth explanation which will help you answer questions in an interview. Now once you are through with React itself, it is then time to focus on the ecosystem. That is, other packages which play well with React and help you create awesome React applications. So let's take a look at this third section. The first thing you need to learn is about state management. You can either learn Redux or MobX and Apollo client if you're using GraphQL. This is another area on which you might be questioned in your interview. I have a course on React Redux if you wish to learn and I hope to make content on GraphQL and Apollo sometime in the future. Next, you're going to learn about routing how to deliver different components when the user visits different URLs in the browser. The go-to package is React Router. As soon as version 6 is released, you can expect a tutorial series in the channel. The next thing to learn is about styling your React apps. You can get started with CSS and JS solutions like styled components or emotion that are really popular or you can also go the route of Tailwind CSS, which is rising in its popularity. And if you want to quickly get up and running, you can use UI libraries like Chakra UI, Material UI, and Design, and so on. But selling your React apps is definitely a key thing to learn. Next, if your application has complex forms to deal with, you might want to learn Formic or React Hook Form. I've used Formic and I find it to be amazing, but React Hook Form is something you could explore if you wish to. When it comes to testing, you'll be learning just with React Testing Library for unit testing and Cypress for end-to-end -end testing. This is an area that I am still learning myself, so hopefully one day in the future, I'll be able to create a series on testing React applications. Apart from these categories, there are a few things that will definitely help you if you wish to learn. First is TypeScript. This will let you add types to your React apps, which will greatly reduce bugs in your code and the auto-completion will make your developer experience much better. Another important tooling that you can have in your pocket is Storybook. If you wish to document your components, this is the package for you. In fact, I feel that you should definitely be aware of some of the features that Storybook offers. So right after the Formic series, I will try to create a mini series on Storybook. Next, if you want internationalization in your application, you can experiment with React i18 Next package. If you want to add authentication, perhaps use a NoSQL type database and also host your React application you can go with Firebase. It is really easy to get started with the SDK and this will also avoid you from having to create your own Node plus MongoDB backend. Finally, you might want to focus on a few practical React libraries 
that will be of use in most of your React applications. For example, adding modals, tooltips, charts, and so on. I have a series on the same topics which you can refer to. If you've come this far, congratulations. You definitely know your React. If you want to broaden your horizon, there are a few paths you could take a detour into. If you want static site generation, there is Gatsby. If you want server-side rendered apps, there is Next.js. And if you want to dive into the world of native mobile apps, there is React Native. So this is my take on the React learning path in 2020. Again, this was something I wanted for myself as I strive towards making this channel a one-stop shop for everything related to React. Now that doesn't mean I'm not going to focus on the other exciting technologies, but I definitely want to help you all understand React and its ecosystem in the simplest way possible. In this list, let me know what you guys are excited to learn. But that is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you guys for watching and if you find the video useful, please leave a like and share the video with your friends and colleagues.